guys, this is Bobo Jones. Oops, and I just slipped into neutral. Embarrassing way to start my video. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, I'm about to head on the PCH, the PCH, to go to the uh, beach. I was actually gonna do the Malibu Canyons today. Um, but it's been raining the past two days, uh, and last time I went after a rain, there was these giant, like, head-sized boulders in the canyon, so, um, not very fun when you're trying to, you know, have some fun out there. Not fun when you're trying to have fun, yeah. So, what I've decided to do instead is I'm still gonna go the beach route, I'm not gonna go up into the canyons, but I'm gonna ride by the beach, and I'm gonna do my review of this bike, which I've been wanting to do for a long time now. I've had this bike over a year now. Uh, it's my first bike that I've ever owned, first motorcycle. Um, and it's been really good to me, so I figure today's a good day to finally do this review. And so hopefully I'll be able to remember everything I wanna say um, about it. But yeah. Um, so it is a 2012 Tiger 800. 2012, right? Yep has ABS. Um, I don't know what he's doing, but the all trying to sell it. He's going to do some fast-ass merging, but not at all. Um, so, yeah. And this bike is awesome. And so today, hopefully, I'm going to cover all the things I love about it. Hopefully, there won't be, like, ridiculous traffic road, but there may be. I apologize guys about the wind noise, but when I'm out here on the beach, I love to ride with my uh, eyes are open. So I've had this bike a little bit uh, over a year now. I got it on Craigslist from a guy who actually worked at the dealership, the Tiger dealership in Southern California. Um, got a good deal on it. I got it with the full three panniers. Um, which I have used once now, but they were awesome. Um, they definitely fuck up the balance of the bike, obviously, unless you get them exactly the same weight, but uh, it was really cool. I got a, So I got a great deal on the bike with the panniers. I also have Bark Busters, which I'm definitely going to install on this bike uh, before my next long ride. Uh, he gave them to me with the bike as well. Um, and so, yeah, those would be great because on the highway, my hands get really fatigued, which is one of the things I'll get into about this bike um, in a little bit. Um, but let's see if I can get through here. Excuse me. Thank you. Yes, truck. Let's see what do we got here. Let's go over this way. Don't get killed by that guy. And then go over here. Get out of my way, please. Move a little bit more. Move, thank you. And we're good. Okay, go back this way. And we're through. Whoa, goodbye. was there, but that's fine. So this bike was a really great bike um, for me to learn on. Um, I got extremely lucky with it. Uh, and it's just, it's been so smooth and I've been able to grow with it so well. So first off, uh, it's fast, uh, especially in the lower gears. Um, it definitely has a decent amount of torque. The kind of power range on it is pretty linear uh, through the rev range, or through the RPM range. Uh, it's extremely linear, so you're never going to get a real spike in power. It's pretty just consistent um, throughout the rev range, whereas like other bikes I've ridden, like the Hyper Motard, uh, you suddenly feel kind of as you're revving the bike out, you feel these bursts of power kind of maybe later in the rev range. Although the Hyper Motard was pretty decent as well, I think. I forgot, it's been a while. Uh, but they definitely felt different. Like I definitely felt these like bursts, you know, as I revved it out. This one, you don't get that. Um, you, 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 you get a very linear 
um, increase the speed throughout the rev range. So uh, that's great when you're learning because uh, it's great when you're cornering, it's great for everything because you're not going to suddenly hit a spike and spin your wheel out or scare yourself. Um, so it's been an excellent, excellent bike to learn on. The gearbox on this bike is also like amazing. Um, it's just super smooth, no clunks, no nothing. It's super easy to shift. The only way I fuck up, which you saw in the beginning of this video, is it's almost a little too easy sometimes to go into neutral. So if I don't commit to a shift or if I'm distracted or something, I will shift into neutral. Um, I probably do it once a day uh, or maybe once every other day. Um, probably once a day, let's be honest. Um, and that's fine. And uh, what else? So yeah, gearbox is great. Uh, so I have done a few things on this which may affect kind of how it rides. Uh, the first thing I've done is uh, when I bought it from the guy who owned it before me, he had the Aero Tune on it. So um, one of the first things I actually did on this bike is put a custom can in. So I bought a Yoshimura RS4 can. I just love Yoshi as a brand. I think they're a really cool brand so that's why I wanted a year you can and this one ended up not being too expensive it was around like 325 bucks um, and it's pretty nice I'll show it to you guys I'll do a walk around on the bike show everything I've done um, so in terms of performance stuff uh, yeah I've added that can he had the ECU on it already uh, I've used the recommended kind of brace oil that they recommend the cash roll 10 w 40 um, but I do use K&N, all K&N everything, so K&N oil filters, which I don't think really does anything. Uh, but then I recently, when I got my 12,000 mile um, uh, service done, I got my uh, K&N air filter as well. And I don't know if it's in my mind, but I feel like something good has happened. But it may all just be in my mind. But I do feel like after that, they also adjusted my valves. Like the bike feels really, really good. The guy behind me, like, very good. Um, so yeah, the bike feels great. Um, and so yeah, the engine on this thing is just a dream. I mean, this engine is so smooth. And I mean, obviously they say if you're just learning, like don't go for an 800. But I feel like this is this kind of engine is the exception just because it's so smooth the gearbox is so smooth it's so even through the rev range but at the same time it's you know you're not gonna like open this bike up and flip it over in fact it's extremely hard to get the front wheel up on this bike i've actually tried some like beginner wheelie stuff on it and it's i've gotten the front end up like maybe an inch so it's not the kind of like torque and power that's going to 800 that's going to be giving you wheelies whereas like something like an fc uh 09 which is also a 800 something triple uh as i understand it that thing's just like a wheelie machine so um so yeah i got again really lucky with getting this bike so what else what else is great about this bike it's ridiculously comfortable uh i'm six foot one 200 pounds, so I'm pretty big. Actually, I'm 210 now, but I won't get down to 200 before my wedding. Uh, I'm pretty big, um, and it's so friggin' comfortable. It's just, it's, it's insanely comfortable. I mean, I've ridden a few other bikes, and it's just night and day uh, compared to those. It's just like, this is like the, you know, uh, is like the lazy boy of bikes. Well, no, I guess like Harley cruisers are like the lazy boy of bikes, but yeah, this bike is insanely comfortable. Um, I don't have the gel seat, and so when I'm riding, um, you know, when I'm riding like loads of miles, it, you know, my ass does fall asleep from the vibration, which is now getting into some of the things um, I don't like but before I get to those so yeah super comfortable this bike is super balanced again the only time I had balance issues on this bike is uh, when 
I um, put the three panniers on it and I probably didn't pack them evenly. Actually, no, I didn't pack them evenly and that completely fucked up the balance of my bike, but that's my own damn fault. Um, I also had my fiance and the three panniers on the bike and I've only had this bike and know how to ride motorcycles for six months, so shame on me. Um, but yeah, super balanced. Um, super comfortable, it's just like very flickable, like you don't feel the weight, it weighs like, uh, I think it weighs like 460 or 470 wet, but when you're moving, I mean the balance of this bike makes it so that um, it just feels super light and amazing, uh, and I love it, and I've ridden other bikes and it just, they just weren't the same, so everything's awesome. Um, in terms of riding this. It's great on the highway. It's great in the city. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a dual sport. I think it's a dual sport. And so, as a result, it's a little wide up by the ears here. And I'm going through tight traffic every morning. This is my only vehicle, by the way, right? So I don't have a... I have a car, but it's my fiance uses it. I have an SUV. Um, so this is my only mode of transportation, and so meaning it's what I use to get to work every day in LA traffic. So I'm doing a lot of lane splitting, and so these these handlebars come out a little wide, but these mirrors come out pretty wide, and they're at the exact height of um, car side view mirrors. So um, that can get a little iffy. Like I'll admit, I've hit a few side view mirrors in my day. Um, so that's one thing, but that's just what you expect from this kind of bike, right? Like when I ride with my buddy Andrew, who has the Cowie 636 that I rode in another video, like he's just like putting his mirrors in it, like cruising past cars and spaces that I definitely can't fit. So it's one thing to consider if you're getting around, but I think the comfort of this bike and the visibility of this bike outweighs the fact that I can't wait split as well. And also if you're in any other state other than California, every other state I believe is illegal to lane split. So um, your your doesn't matter for you. So yeah, it's great. It's a great city bike. It's just like such a good all-purpose bike. So things I don't like about this bike um, is first of all I have it with the I don't know what the regular one is if you don't have the hand warmers but I got he had the hand warmer ones on these 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 handlebars are I don't know maybe they're fine maybe they're normal but when I get on traffic and I'm going you know 80 miles an hour consistently the vibration on this bike is just insane and so what ends up happening is even though it's super comfortable like the seat and everything my hands fall asleep so bad and my ass after like an hour hour and a half is just dead because uh, of the vibration and so i'm curious to see uh if that has changed since um since they did the, third, the 12,000 mile maintenance because they retighten everything to factory specs, all the bolts and everything. But I haven't ridden it like on the highway consistently, but I mean, it's really torturous. When I went up to Napa with my fiance and we were just riding for like three hours at a time, like my ass and my hands were just dead. So that's one thing, the vibration's pretty crazy. Um, so that's a big negative for me. Um, I don't know if I have any other negatives besides that. Uh, when you see this bike moves, like, when you get it going, um, in the lower gears, it's actually quite fast. Um, if you're in third gear, like when I'm getting on the highway in third or fourth gear, it's really fast. I can get up to 110 in fourth gear and I think it tops out, like totally tops out at around 130. Um, so it's definitely a quick bike. Yeah, and the acceleration is good. Um, but you're not going to kill yourself on it. And you're not going to scare yourself with the speed or open up by accident. And like, like if I open up right now, see, like I'll go, but I'm not going to like if I did what I just did on like a, you know, on like a BMW S1000R, uh, I'd be in a tricky situation. I don't actually know where I'm going. I never go up this far. 
So, a few things about this. So I got it in this crazy green color, which I didn't really like at first. I was like, oh, it had to be the green. Um, it's called like Venom Green. But now that I've actually been riding it, I actually really like it. And I think it just gives it a lot more, um, I don't know, it's just pretty cool compared to like the straight black one or the blue one. I also think it's really nice that the rest of the bike is like kind of this matte black. And it, I just like the contrast a lot. So I'm actually really happy with this color now. Also from a visibility standpoint, probably doesn't make a big deal, but it's good. So some of the other things I've done to it, I put these on. These are um, like these adjustable uh, eBay Chinese machined um, brake lever and clutch lever. Uh, I think I paid like 25 or 30 bucks for the pair. Um, and so they're shorties and they're really nice. I don't like use them properly because I don't use two fingers on them. I use like three or four or like squished four. So, uh, but they're still way better than my stock ones that I had. Um, so after I dropped my bike the first time, I was like, well, I want to get engine guards, A, to protect the engine in case I ever go down and B, just because I think they look cool on this kind of bike. Um, so they definitely add some weight, but I put these on their Puig or Puig, I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, I put these guys on myself actually. Um, and as you can see, they have been tested since twice um, when I was in my parking lot and somewhere else. Um, but yeah, I take really good care of the bike. I try to clean the bike a lot. I do a lot of chain maintenance on it. Um, let's take a look at the storage. It actually has pretty decent storage. Here's the key and then we'll go over the muffler stuff. So pretty good storage. I have a GPS unit in here. I have these documents, which I don't want anybody to see. Um, I have my toolkit in here from Tiger. I have my like fast track thing, which I don't even know if I need. Have some earplugs here, um, my tire pressure gauge. So I actually have a lot of shit in here and then there's more shit under there. USB cable, charging stuff. Um, I have an accessory that goes in here. There's a charging port here. Um, and it's kind of shitty. It doesn't work very well because the accessory kind of sticks out and it's just super awkward. I wish they just had a regular kind of car charging port, but whatever, in case of emergencies or I want to use my GPS, GPS, I have that. I have my phone holster thing here. Again, I know this isn't about the bike, but just showing you what I've put on it. Um, so this holds my phone. It's showing me what I'm recording right now. Um, and then this thing holds my GPS. Um, I told you I got the air filter in it. Um, what else? So I put this Yoshi on it and let me put it in neutral. And so the reason I got this Yoshi was, uh, there was a few reasons. Number one, I have to put the key in it though to start it usually. That's how these things work apparently. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it because I have my internal mic, but yeah, originally I did it because, well, first of all, he had the, the arrow tune on it, so I figured I should have a aftermarket can. I also just like the way this looks. The other one is this massive fucking ugly, gross, heavy thing. And I love the red on here. Obviously red and green are complementary colors and the bike also has touches of red throughout here. I got these with the red. Um, so there's just some red going on. The lights, obviously the backlight and the reflectors. Um, and so I thought it'd be, I just think it looks cool. It has the carbon tip, um, just really nice. Um, it also gives the bike a way better sound. The bike sounds a little like too squealy for me. And you could still hear that squeal, right? That triple squeal in it. But it gives it that nice, you know, like low tone, that which I like. It also pops a lot when you accelerate. So you can hear it has that nice pop. Um, I took out the decibel killer. 
um, and it just sounds really good. Um, so I got it mainly for that ECU, but I also got it because I'm, obviously this is my main bike, and when I'm going through LA traffic and lane splitting, especially on the highway where it's super scary, um, you know, I like to rev so that people know I'm coming, and, and before people wouldn't really move, but now with this one, uh, like you just see like everything splits and if it's me and Andrew and he's on his he has a like a, What does he have? A, I forgot what it's called four brothers or something exhaust uh, Carbon on his Ninja and we're both revving like cars 15 cars ahead of us. will just split on the highway um, And it's just really good to know that people know that I'm there and that they don't kill me um, The lights on this bike are amazing. I don't want to kill my battery So I'm gonna turn them off but the regular lights are just really ridiculous compared to other bikes I've ridden. I mean, they're super good and they're not even LED. They're just like lights. And then the high beams are crazy. Um, so I know it doesn't look like much in the day, but they're really great lights. They have a super wide um, kind of field of view and yeah, I love them. Um, turn signals. I think the whole kind of front end of this bike is probably my least favorite part of the bike. I think it looks okay, and I definitely prefer this light set compared to the newer um, kind of Mantis -y, uh Speed Triple. I love the old Speed and Street Triple, the round lights, but I don't like the new Mantis -y ones. These are somewhere kind of in the middle. Um, so, but definitely the front end is my least favorite part of this bike. Um, I actually prefer it without the beak on it. Um, but yeah, let's turn it off. Oh, it is off. Um, but I love the design of this bike. The reason I fell in love with this bike is because my buddy at work, when I was first looking at bikes, was sending me, like, what bikes you should get. Let's make sure I'm still recording. Yes. And, uh, and he sent me this one, and I saw it, and I just fucking love it. Um, and bees love it, too. Bees love my bike and my helmet because it's this, like high-vis color. Um, they just think it's a flower and they want to have sex with me and my helmet and my bike. But let's see if I can get real close to him, give you guys a good shot. Hopefully it won't fly in my helmet. Um, so that's a, that's one part. Keep in mind, if you have a high-vis helmet, you're going to have fucking bees flying at you. I actually had a bee fly in my helmet when I had my scooter and it wasn't even my yellow <laughs> yellow anything but it flew in my helmet and stung me right by the eye and freaked me the fuck out while I was going like 55 miles an hour but calmly pulled over and was fine uh, but I love the look of this bike it looks great I think the back is nice um, it's just like super nice the matte black the engine just looks badass and it just looks like a beefy bike like when people see it it looks really cool like it doesn't look like a you know, it has like a sporty feel to it, especially with these uh, tires I put on it, the Michelin uh, Pilot Road 4s. It just like looks really good. I love it. I just love the design of this bike. I like it with the engine guards. Just looks like, you know, it gets moving. The one thing I will say is that obviously it's my daily bike. When I put the um, top box on it, it just makes it look totally shitty and terrible like everybody's like your bike looks it's like a different bike with the top box on it it gets really just like nerdy delivery man looking with the top box on it but that's with any bike i think um, but i just love the design i love that just the matte black like nice engine all the matte black parts with just like this nice kind of yellow on it um, i have abs on it i have um Hand warmers, as I said. Uh, the one thing I wish I had, which I know is more of a wire by throttle bikes have it more, but uh, throttle by wire, not wire by throttle, uh, is cruise control. Um, again, so I could give my hands a rest when I'm riding. Oh, I never noticed that said 800 on it, um, on the highway, because if I could just take my hands off for a minute and chill, that'd be really nice. Uh, put these tires on it, as I said, Michelin Pilot, what is that called? Pilot Road 4 Trails. Best tires ever, completely changed the bike from my Scorpion Pirellis that I had on it before, which are kind of like half road, half dirt, half road tires. These tires are like glue. I mean, these tires are incredible. It changed the bike completely. I can't state that enough. Uh, obviously, they're worse when I'm on a dirt road, but I'm never on a dirt road, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I haven't ridden this on dirt, and yeah, I'm thinking if I upgrade um, 
it's gonna be either to a, I wanna do one of two things. I might not upgrade it because it's great and I've only been riding a year and I'm still not a great rider as you can see from my like downshifts and stuff like that. Um, I'm still learning, uh, as you can imagine, learning to ride a motorcycle is a many, many, many year skill. But, so one thing I'm thinking of doing is getting a DRZ, like a little dirt bike, Suzuki dirt bike, and keeping it at my bud's house and just doing like dirt trails. Um, and the other option though, the neutral, the other option um, is that I'd sell this and get like a crazy naked bike, which I don't think would be smart. Like I really want to get an S1000. Are. Uh, oh, this bike's really easy to stand on too, like when you're going over bumps and stuff. Uh, it actually works well. The, the bars are a little lower than you'd hope for, but it's comfy. And whenever I'm going over bikes, I stand on this bumps, I stand on this bike, uh, which is nice as well. Um, and yeah, so that's it. It's a fucking amazing bike. If you're a bigger dude um, and you're looking for your first bike, uh, obviously it's a little heavier than, than other bikes, but it's just so good. It's so good to learn on this bike because this engine is just a dream. Oh, I didn't close my helmet. Uh, in terms of the windscreen, it's pretty good. It's still blasting the top of my head, obviously, because I'm a little taller, but it's good. And if I go here, like if I'm on the highway and I want to look like a nerd and just block the wind, I'll go down here. And then as you can see, like, no more wind, but then you look like an asshole. So it's fine for the most part. I mean, whatever, you have your visor down. It's somewhat between the, the windshield and your helmet being somewhat aerodynamic, you'll be, you'll be all right. Yeah, oh, and one more thing, the mirrors are amazing on this bike. I've had a bunch of people ride this bike and they're like, it's one of the best mirrors ever. The, you can see everything in these mirrors and they don't vibrate at all, even though the bike does. I think they're just incredible. So another really good thing um, is the mirrors. Uh, so I also wanted to cover the dash. Um, I think the dash is uh, great on this bike from a functionality standpoint. Um, I don't think it's the most beautiful or modern looking thing ever. Um, not a big fan of like the chunky gray uh, plastic on it. Um, but uh, it's worked so well and it's so clear and the information is so easy. I've never in any sunlight not been able to read it. Um, so it gives you your fuel gauge here, it gives you your heat here, your RPMs obviously, all your lights are over here, your warning stuff. Um, in terms of the information, right now I have it on my average miles per gallon. As you can see I'm getting around 46. Uh, I can change it to my uh, average miles per hour, which is pretty low because I'm a city rider. Um, I can change it to, uh, I don't know what that is, miles. Um, I can see how many miles till empty. That's a great feature when you're low, when you're on like one or two bars. Um, because it just shows you your range, um, which is really nice. So right now I have 100 miles left uh, at my current speed and it'll adjust as you're going different speeds, right? So if you get stuck in traffic and you're suddenly stop and go, going, you know, zero to 20 miles an hour, the range will go down. So it calculates it pretty much in real time. Like it gets a really good sense of what you're doing. And it's a great feature when you're low and you're like, fuck, how much farther can I get when I'm in the canyons and I have like one or two bars left? It, it just like gives me peace of mind. All right, I can definitely get to a gas station within the next 20 miles. Like I'll be fine, I don't have to freak out. Um, so that's really nice. And then the last one it has, which I'll show you after I turn this corner. Pops out of here. Um, the last thing it has is your just average, oh no, I don't know what that is here. How, how long you've been riding in the trip. And then just your average miles per gallon. That's not real time, but that's what I get. So that brings me to another point, which is, um, as you can see, I'm not getting great gas mileage. That's a few factors, right? First of all, that is the fact that I'm riding in the city and I'm at a lot of flights, just in neutral, idling, um, often. Oh, I love these fucking fog lights that the guys have. It's awesome. Um, and the other factor, besides 
besides my city riding, because it still should be higher, is again, I have that arrow tune on here. So it's actually spitting out um, a lot more gasoline uh, than it normally would on the standard tune, because um, just to give me that extra power and to, to work with those cans, right? I personally don't care about fuel efficiency, like whatever, these bikes get really good mileage either way. Uh, I'd rather have like a faster, sportier bike. You can turn ABS off on this. Um, you have to turn the bike on. I think it has to be in neutral or something. And then you can turn ABS uh, off if you're doing like serious dirt riding. But uh, as soon as you turn off and on the bike, it's gonna reset to on, so it's temporary. Uh, I've never actually turned it off because I've never gone dirt riding. Um, but yeah, and I have used the ABS by the way. Um, so I've used the bottom brake ABS a few times when I had to stop hard or a light turned red that I was thinking about going through and then didn't or whatever, or a car suddenly was like going in front of me. Uh, I think I've used both. The foot one you really feel, the foot ABS, um, you feel it go like boom, 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 on your foot. Um, the, this one, I think I felt too on my, um, front brake, um, but who knows. But yeah, I love having the ABS. Uh, I'm a new rider, so I would definitely, and you know, it doesn't rain much here, but, um, or in case of emergencies, I definitely would not trust my ability to emergency brake. I took MSF, but took some courses, and even in that course, it's like, when we did our emergency braking on their shitty, like, old ass, whatever, Honda Rebels, um, like, your back tire slides out when you do that, you know what I mean? And, and those are like little whatever bikes. On this bike, you know, on that bike I can control a little slide out because it's so light, but um, on this bike I might be in trouble. So, um, I love having it. I love the peace of mind of it. I would not get a bike without ABS, uh, but again, if you're a more experienced rider, then more power to you if you can brake better than the ABS can uh, in an emergency situation or a rainy situation, then good for you. Um, I cannot, <laughs> for sure. gave this bike a lot of respect and so it was fine and I grew into it well but if if you're not uh, super responsible then uh, you know you can definitely get yourself into trouble with this or not expect the speed uh, it's definitely exhilarating uh, you'll definitely get that speed high from it but uh, yeah you got to be a responsible person third gear when I open up. You see how I don't like fly forward, it still kind of goes in, but uh, it's great. And um, yeah, I can't say enough good stuff about this bike. So anyway, that's it guys. Uh, overall, definitely would recommend this bike. I've ridden about four or five motorcycles now. Uh, I've ridden some really great ones, but uh, as a starter bike, this one's just amazing. Um, so if you're thinking of getting it, as long as you're tall enough that you can touch the ground, I have the seat, the seat's adjustable, I have it in the highest position. As long as you're tall enough that you can touch the ground, I'd say it's a great first bike. I would totally, totally recommend it. Um, I need to figure out something for the vibration, these handlebars. I'm gonna put my bark busters on. But you could spend probably a thousand bucks just upgrading little things on this, or five, not even 500 bucks. And you're in, you have a really ridiculous uh, motorcycle. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope I covered anything. If I missed anything, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm going to try to edit it so it's not too long. This whole trip is probably about an hour and change, but uh, I'll make it shorter. And yeah, that's it. Uh, great bike, Tiger 800. If you're thinking about it, go get one. Bobo Jones saying, Arriba Dirt Cheap.